welcome back to a new video here in Suave. This is the first video of episode 2 of the After Effects 2 DaVinci Resolve series. In this video, we're gonna cover this basic sort of rotating, rolling ball made with motion graphics using Fusion. And the last thing that I added here was a sound effect that's just an extra, and that is just about finding the sound that will go with the ball rolling and then just adding it right there. Okay, so for the first thing that you will need, you will need to create a new Fusion composition. For that, we can go here to where it says uh, effects and then add a Fusion composition. And then we're gonna bring, come here and we're gonna right click and then open Fusion. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna add a background that will serve as the base. And then we're gonna make this transparent so that we have a transparent background to work with. Then we can add the second background, which is going to act as our background, which is going to be the white background. Why do I do this? In the case that I want to change something here, like take it out or something, then it's easier to do that rather than having to just play with this one and then alter the color and do and apply many changes to this one. So that's why we have this other background here. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is add a third background again. And this is going to be our ball background. You can press F2 on a node to rename it. And then we're going to connect this here. Oops, not there. We're going to connect this here. Then you can use a polygon and make it into an ellipse or we can use an ellipse. In this case, ellipse is going to be the easiest way and we can just resize it. So it's the size that you want. 0.15. There it goes. And now the basic animation, we're not going to do it here, but we're going to add a transform node. And for that, we're going to press control and spacebar or shift spacebar sometimes works too to open that. And then we're going to add the transform node. Now we can also change the color and we should do that right now. We're going to add a gradient. That way we can see how our ball is moving and the colors don't really matter. You can just choose whatever color you like. In this case, I'm going to choose a yellow and then this black one we're gonna change to is blue yeah that looks interesting and if you want the line in the middle to be more sharp then you can just get them closer to each other okay now we have that the next thing that we want to do is we're gonna animate the rolling so for that we're gonna use the positioning and the angle the angle because right now they are both center the ellipse is right here in the middle the pivot point is right there and also the transform is in the same pivot point, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And if you look here, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5. If this was moved, now when we move the angle, then the movement is gonna be a little bit different, which can work great, but not if you're trying to do sort of like a ball rolling effect. Okay, now I just restarted everything. We're gonna go to the first frame and we're gonna bring this to the side right here. After we have that keyframe created, we can go 48 frames or depending on how long you want to make your animation last, could be 76, it's all up to you. If you want it to be faster, then just add less frames. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a 0.5 here right in the middle and then we're gonna go a few frames, let's say 54 and we're gonna create a new keyframe and then we're gonna go 48 frames again so plus 48 here, so we just go 48. We, so we don't have to calculate. And then here we can just move these to the side again. Now, if we look at these, it does not look like it's rotating at all, right? Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is we're gonna add the keyframes for the angle. And for these, we can just add the keyframe right here. And then here we can just do minus 360. And if we look at it, we will see the ball rolling. It will be just one complete roll if you use 360. If you do this times two, then it will be two, two rolls, two full rolls. So it really depends on how you want this to look. Like uh, it's all about playing around and see what looks fine. In this case, I like it better when it's just one. So we're gonna leave this at minus 360. And then after the pause, we're gonna start at minus 360. And since it's going the same direction, we're just gonna do again here, minus 360 or times two. It's the same and it will be minus 720. So it will roll again 
and rotate the same amount. Now, how do we make these look a little bit more realistic? One of the things that we can do is add a little bit of motion blur. So for that, we're going to go to the settings and then motion blur and then play around with the shutter angle. I like it to leave between 30 and 80. And if you have a strong GPU, you can increase the quality. Right now I'm recording, so I'm not going to increase that. Otherwise, it's going to take too much of my resources. Now that we have that, what is the next thing? In the example that you have, you saw that there's a drop shadow. So for that, I'm going to press Ctrl and space bar again to open this menu, and we're going to add a drop shadow. Now, this doesn't look that great because it's just sort of like if there was a light right here in front. What we want to do is to make it seem that there's a light coming from the top. For that, first, we're going to play with the angle so that our drop shadow is right here. Then you can play around with the distance a little bit. And we can also play with the shadow strength and the blur. Now that does not look great yet. So for that, to make it look how we want to, we can add a polyline here or a polygon, I'm sorry. And we're going to actually we can come to the middle right here and we can we can first right click here and remove the, the keyframe. Otherwise, it's going to adapt and move every time. And we're going to go here and try to create a shape around the bottom part of our ball right here. And if you want it to be a little bit more circle, you can just place this circle right here with all of them selected. So it's going to be a little bit more circular and we can adjust these little points right here. And we can invert it back and then we can add a soft edge so that the shadow is not that sharp in here. Now that looks interesting and looks like the ball is moving, but what happens if we just press play right here? You'll see the, the shadow. It's only seen here because this polygon is not moving. Now you can try animating it so that it moves at the same time as the ball. But the easiest way is actually to just right click here where it's the center. And then we're going to connect these to the path position which is the same path that we have created here with the transform keyframes here. So now this same polygon is going to move with that path. And then we will see this shadow moving at the same time. Now, if you see these a little bit weird right there is because we were not at the complete center when creating this polygon. So that is why. So usually you want to be at the dead center. That way we know this is 0.5 and 0.5, and this is also 0.5 and 0.5. That way you can create and adjust your polygon right here. Otherwise, it's going to stay a little bit delayed like it did before. So now we have that, and that is basically it. Now, the last thing that you can do is also go to this plan here with the transform selected, and we're going to select everything, pressing Control A, and then we're going to go right here and see everything on screen. Right now, everything is linear which means it's going at a constant rate. But if you wanted to make to be a little bit more smooth, you can press S to ease them in and out, or you can also press F. There's a difference between both of these is that here, if you see the S, it only applies to one side of the of our keyframe, and then it becomes a little bit linear and then does the same here in the other side. Actually, I think I think Patrick has a great video explaining these uh, the main difference between linear, the S and F. Now, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to press Ctrl A and then we're going to press F. And now we're going to have our smooth animation of our ball sort of like starting a little bit slower. Then it becomes a little bit faster as it gets to our point. But what if you wanted to start faster? What we can do is press T, select these two right here, and we're going to decrease the ease out. And then we're going to select these two and we're going to ease them in that way you will see the ball coming in and then it will just slow down as it gets to the point that we want you'll see how it slows down and if you don't want to see all of these while you're just playing back things what you can do is go here to these three dots and then show controls and deactivate that and then we can see the ball slowing down now if it slows too fast then we can decrease it and it's all up to you and how you experiment to see how it looks. Now, in this case, if we wanted to start a little bit slower and then speed, what we would do here is selecting this one and then increase the ease out option. And if you would rather manually adjust this when selecting this, you will see the difference here. Um, I'm not sure what you call these handles. And then you can adjust these 
to play around and see which one looks better. Now the ball is coming in fast and slows down, but you gotta take into account that if you take the ease in of these too much, then the ball can get into the position way quicker than the rotation and it will just stay rotating in place. So you wanna take into account that when you're just playing around with the curves here. And that is pretty much it for this first video. The last step in this case would be just to go to the edit page and add the sound effects here that we have. And since we use the same keyframes, we can just copy and paste these sound effects and then we can just preview these on screen. Now, don't forget to watch part two in which we are gonna be covering how to make this bouncy effect that you can then apply to any type of other motion graphics that you want to create here in Fusion. Now, if you reach all the way until the end of the video, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check part two of this episode if you're interested in learning more. This is it for this video and I will see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.